How's it going everybody? Texas Man here. I hope you guys are doing a great and having an amazing day. Please give this video a thumbs up if you guys will really enjoy it. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. Also do me the biggest favor of all, hit the bell notification button so you guys don't miss out on future videos or streams here on my channel. Also make sure to head over to Twitch. Follow me and friend me there at Douglas447, capital D. It's got a Detective Pikachu icon picture. And uh, guys, we're here. This is part three of the Final War Epic End. If you guys haven't checked out the overview and introduction, parts one, part two, make sure you guys do that before you guys continue on in this video. And if you guys are reading along with me, we're going to be starting on page 27, chapter 20, Battle of the Universe. And uh, as everything, if everything goes according to plan, um, this will be the last part that I will be doing for this book. And uh, I apologize for all the noise. I've got my neighbors next door that are having a good time partying. And I've also got a fan next to me so I don't die of heat stroke. Because uh, it's about, 90, about 98, 99 degrees outside right now at the time we're recording. And uh, yeah, no, I don't want to die. So uh, I am really stoked, guys. We've gotten... This is the last... This is the ending. This is the epic conclusion to the Unifor Universe. I am very excited. I'm very excited that we're at this point. So to backtrack... Um, what basically happened at the end of part two, uh, Halo killed his parents. Found out that they were core spies and he killed them. So all that remains is Halo and Darth Update to kill. Halo is officially mortal, thanks to Nathan Lasky, Count Dracula, Jack Frost, and the Alpha Lock. Um, Devin has been turned into Bulkhead and found out that Nathan Lasky basically took certain people and created the entire transformer race both the good and the bad guys and uh yeah this is it guys so this this is the epic conclusion i'm so excited i yeah we're here we're we're we're, we're here <sighs> so yeah chapter 20 is extremely long it goes from page 27 all the way to 41 and then the final chapter is only like seven eight pages long so uh i hope you guys all enjoy the epic conclusion to not only the final war trilogy this final war trilogy book of epic end but this is also the final video final chapters of the Unifor universe this is going to end everyone's story arcs you're going to find out does good win and if they do at what cost I hope you guys enjoy I'm so excited we're here oh, I don't want to read this because I know exactly what happens but you don't if you're watching this video and you're not reading the book with me <laughs> I don't want to do this. Oh, I hope you guys actually enjoy the ending. I really do. I hope you guys enjoy the ending. <sighs> I need about 10 seconds before I start reading because I'm just like, I'm so happy. I, I'm also scared. I'm, I'm scared that I have to read this to you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm really scared I got to do this. Oh... I hope you guys enjoy the ending. I hope you guys aren't going to, like, spam the comment section and be like, The ending was so horrible. Why did you write the ending that way? <sighs> yes, in case you guys are wondering, I'm wearing new glasses. In case, in case you guys haven't figured that out in the past couple of recent videos. Yeah. So, <sighs> here we go, guys. <clears throat> Chapter 20, Battle of the Universe. Well, now that Halo is mortal, what is the plan? asked Chad, with the rest of the core leaders in the room, still with the Alpha Lock. I think you three should inform us of the truth, said Douglas. Suddenly, the Halo tr the Halo Trinity. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Suddenly, the Holy Trinity 
Jeremy Prime, Jack Frost, Count Dracula, Nathan Lasky, Douglas Amy, Ash, and Team Bravo separated from Chad, Peter, and Laura with a look. The core members aimed their rifles at Chad, Peter, and Laura to show them that they were in trouble. What is this? asked Laura. You tell me, replied Douglas. I don't understand, said Peter. Really? Chad, why didn't you say why our... That didn't come out right. Really? Chad, why don't you say why you are... What the heck? Okay, I think this sentence is written wrong. I, I probably should fix this, but whatever. Really? Chad, why don't you say why you are really with the core, said Douglas. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Everyone looked at Chad and realized the time had come to resolve the issue their claim to be core members, but really were working for the regime. Finally, this plot line is coming to an end. <laughs> Our love triangle has been our cover-up from day one of working for the Corps, said Chad. What was the cover-up for, asked God, sad at the betrayal. We were hired as regime spies by Halo to locate and kill the one of rare and true blood while Halo was in prison, said Chad. You tried to kill my husband, asked Amy. Yes, but we were never able to because of you people always around him. So we decided that... So we decided to hate. So we decided to aid Halo in telling of Douglas's plans of what the core was doing. Said Peter. There we go. Now I can talk. What do you plan to do with us? Asked Laura, about to draw her blaster rifle. I will spare your lives with a reminder to you. If you go against the core again, I will personally hang you to death. Said Douglas. I doubt that will last. Said a man entering the room. Who might you be? Asked Douglas. You haven't told them yet that you have three stepbrothers, said the 17-year-old man, looking at Nathan. I thought you could introduce yourself, answered Nathan. Hi, Commander of the Corps. My name... Can't believe I just butchered this. Hi, Commander of the Corps. My name is Ben Tennyson. Jack Frost and Count Dracula are my brothers, and I'm here to serve the Corps the best I can with my Omnitrex, said the young man. There you go. Ben Tens here. Please just call me Douglas. What is your Omnitrex? said Douglas. Ben Ten moved his black shirt and green jacket to reveal a green and black watch on his left hand. This gadget is the Omnitrex. It allows me to turn into every alien creature in the universe, including ones from No Man's Land and the Uncharted Space, said Ben. That sounds cool, said Amy. Not really. Ever since I built it and put it on, I have never been able to take it off, said, said Ben. Sounds like a powerful curse, said Douglas. Yes, and I plan to use it for the core, unlike those three, said Ben, looking at Chad, Peter, and Laura. Everyone separated their ways, and Nathan, Jack, Dracula, and Ben showed you to Alpha, Jeremy Prime, and Bulkhead where they would be able to sleep. Eventually, everyone in the core base was asleep, and everyone was wondering what the next day would hold, with the war raging to an end. Location, Regime Base. As the new day arose and brought a bright light upon the planet Lando, Halo and Darth Uptake came into a hallway, with each of them coming at each other from the opposite direction. Good morning, General, said Halo. Darth Update did not respond to Halo, and instead activated his red lightsaber and charged towards the regime leader. Darth Update reached Halo's position and swung his lightsaber to chop Halo's head off, yet was stopped in a lightsaber cross with Halo's lightsaber. What is wrong with you? asked Halo. Really? You don't remember why I wanted you dead? You don't know why I have been trying to prove myself to you? Are you really that dumb? asked Darth Update. I know you are mad I never gave you an army to control of your own, but you are acting just like my parents did last night, said Halo. I'm not acting like Cody and Mavis. They were spies for the Corps. The only reason that I prevented them from killing you was so I could kill you myself and have my revenge, said Darth Update. I offer my T-180 army, and I'm sorry for making you a low-life green stick, said Halo. I accept your offer, said Darth Update deactivating his lightsaber and walking away from Halo. Halo deactivated his lightsaber and watched as his general turned around. A word of advice, Commander. You want 
you might want to make a move against the core, because my guess is they know you are mortal, said Darth Update, looking at Halo's left leg. Halo looked at his left leg to see it was bleeding. Location, the core base. As Douglas, Amy, Jeremy, Jack, Ben, Dracula, Nathan, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Chad, Peter, Laura, Ash, Optimus, Bumblebee, R.C., Ratchet, Ironhide, and Bulkhead, that's a long list, <laughs> awoke from their sleep in their bedrooms, a very loud siren could be heard. The core group of 20 leaders quickly dressed themselves and grabbed a breakfast bar to eat while heading to the source of the siren. Soon, they were all in the communications room to see the entire core army of humans, angels, and primes surrounding the communication station. The core leaders quickly traveled through the crowd of 7,000 troops to reach the control panels. What is going on? Nathan asked Douglas. We have an incoming call from an unknown location, replied Nathan. Was someone supposed to be calling at 8 in the morning? asked Peter, finishing his breakfast bar. No, and I fear whom it might be, because the entire core is here in this base, said Nathan. Nathan pressed a few buttons on the control panels, and the call was put onto the screens in the enormous room, so that everyone in the room could hear and see the call. The message was fuzzy at first as it came in, but after a few seconds the core could see Halo Shadow and Darth Update. Hello, my name is Halo Shadow. I am the leader of the regime that you are fighting against. This is my general, Darth Update, said Halo, as the message was a feed from inside of the regime base on Lambdo. What do you want, and how did you get this base's frequency, asked Douglas. On the screen, the face of three evil Transformers appeared. These are a few of my friends. This is the leader of Team Doom called Shockwave, and his friends Megatron and Starscream. They recovered a lot of information from the STC-40, said Halo. You didn't blow it up, asked Nathan to Douglas. I thought it was destroyed enough. Enough, replied Douglas. You haven't answered my first question, said Douglas, looking at the screens. I can see your army in the background of your screen, and I must say I am happy I made this call, said Halo. What do you want already, yelled Amy. Amy, the wife to Douglas, I must say you're beautiful. I want to challenge your husband to a lightsaber duel with both armies able to watch. This will prevent more bloodshed and end this war once and for all, said Halo. What does the winner get, asked Douglas. The winner will be the ruler of this entire universe and will get to have Amy forever. Failure to agree will result in your base being bombed by Dreadwing forever until you face me or starve from starvation, said Halo. You'll never get to put your hands on my wife, said Douglas. Then meet me at Nathan's old laboratory so we can end this. Also, since I know you have made me mortal, this will be an even fight, said Halo. I'll be there in one hour, said Douglas. I hope so, for your wife's sake, said Halo. The call ended and the screens went dark. How are you going to kill him when he has seven times more experience in lightsaber battling, asked Amy. Happily, her husband was going to put down those that wanted to harm her. When the Alpha Lock made Halo mortal, it made me immortal. No matter what happens, I will have the upper hand in making this the last duel to win this final war, said Douglas. Within one hour, the regime base emptied out. All 3,000 T-180s and 2,000 demons followed Halo Shadow, Darth Update, Shockwave, Megatron, Starscream, Knockout, Soundwave, and Dreadwing as the regime army began the journey to the upcoming duel. The core base was left completely abandoned as 1,000 humans, 1,000 angels, and 5,000 primes followed Douglas, Amy, Chad, Peter, Laura, Ash, Jeremy, Jack, Dracula, Ben, Nathan, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Optimus, Bumblebee, R.C., Ratchet, Ironhide, and Bulkhead to the laboratory where Nathan built the relic keys, the machine, Devastator, and Team Doom. Both armies arrived at opposite sides of the ruins of the laboratory after the one hour travel, and each army leader looked at the other to realize it had come down to this. Both armies were prepared to engage the other in case the enemy decided to end the lightsaber duel and begin a battle there and now. Good luck, said Bulkhead, rooting his brother on. Thanks, but I don't need luck to win this war. 
The only thing I need is faith in the fact that if I die, I will be in paradise, replied Douglas. If it should seem to be going poorly, go to plan B, said Halo to Darth Update in secret. Understood, Commander, replied Darth Update. Halo and Douglas left their armies and came face to face with each other in a large square part of the ruins where no rubble remained. This square is the battlefield. If you leave it without us both agreeing for a break, you must forfeit your life willingly, said Halo. Agreed, said Douglas. Douglas and Halo activated their lightsabers, Douglas's being green and Halo's being red, and looked at the center of the arena to see higher ground. Both men dashed for it to gain the upper hand. Both of them reached the center and swung their lightsabers at each other to make a connection X. Just let you know, one of rare and true blood, Cody and Mavis Shadow will no longer be providing intelligence against the regime, said Halo. You killed your parents for nothing, Halo. They were never supplying us with intelligence against you. They joined the regime to end your madness, replied God, watching the duel take place. I don't care. I eliminated a core threat, just like I will do so to your so-called son, said Halo to God. Douglas and Halo broke off from, from the connection and began slowly moving in a circle. Douglas looked at Halo's left leg to see it bleeding and smiled to realize he was truly mortal. How does it feel to be mortal? asked Douglas. I hate it, and I plan to end the one that made me mortal, said Halo in an angry tone. Halo ran straight towards Douglas with his lightsaber ready to jab it into Douglas's chest, but before he could reach him, Halo tripped on a banana peel. I forgot I put that in there. <laughs> Douglas used his lightsaber and swung his lightsaber at the ground and ended up slicing Halo's legs off from the rest of his body. Douglas tried to remove his lightsaber from its stuck position in the ground while Halo used his powers to regrow his legs. Halo stood up, walked over to Douglas, and stabbed him in the back of the chest. Douglas looked to see the lightsaber blade running through his chest, retrieved his lightsaber from the ground, stood up, and pulled Halo's lightsaber all the way through his body. What the hell did you do to yourself? asked Halo. When I made you mortal, I made myself immortal, replied Douglas, tossing Halo back his lightsaber. This is not a fair duel, said Halo. You are the one that wanted to duel me and no one else, said Douglas. True. Chad, Peter, Laura, end the secret and kill the core, said Halo. Suddenly, Chad turned into a T-180 while Peter and Laura turned their blaster rifles at the core leaders. The three betrayers walked out of the core crowd, past Douglas, and stood by Halo's side in the arena. Since you lied to me about this being a fair fight, your wife and the rest of the core leaders will die now, said Halo. Not on my watch, said a voice. Everyone looked, everyone looked to see that Ashbecca had teleported from the core crowd and was behind Peter and Laura. Your mouths like to talk evil, so they should... Your mouths like to talk like evil, so they should enjoy eating radiation grenades, said Ash. Ash used his powers to freeze time for a few seconds to place a radiation grenade into both Peter's and Laura's mouths. Ash unfroze time, and everyone watched as the grenades were activated and turned them into dust in two seconds. Your friend killed my love! Now I kill yours, yelled Chad in his T-180 form. Chad towards... Chad charged towards Amy, while Halo and the armies of the Corps and the Regime took cover for the upcoming battle. Chad dashed and dashed with extreme speed, but when he found Amy, Chad had a green lightsaber stabbed in the back of his head. The body of Chad Taylor collapsed to the ground and allowed Amy to see Douglas saving her. Douglas retrieved his lightsaber and kissed his wife. Ready to end this? asked Douglas to Amy. Hell yes! exclaimed Amy. Douglas looked at his army of 7,000 troops, ready to battle the enemy of 5,000 troops. The 20 core leaders lined up beside Douglas and Amy to form the first wave of attackers, while Halo, Darth Update, and Team Doom formed their own line on the opposite side of the ruins. It ends today. Kill them all, yelled Halo, charging his T-180, Demon, and Evil Transformer forces at the core. So this is how it ends. Let the battle of the universe end quickly, said Douglas in his mind. The Corps watched as the regime ran towards them with intense speed and wondered what Douglas was waiting for to give the order to charge. 
Everyone get you ready, yelled Douglas. Just as their gene was only 20 seconds away from being in firing range of the Corps, the entire Corps army disappeared from sight. Halo looked around and realized he had teleported his entire army behind the regime. Behind us, yelled Halo to his army. Charge, ordered Douglas, giving his army the chance to take out the regime's artillery batteries and tanks first. Gunfire and explosions covered the battlefield as the two armies clashed against each other to make this final war end at last. After battling through several enemies using their lightsabers, Amy and Ash came face to face with the green stick general, Darth Uptay. Do you really want to duel me? asked Darth Uptay. Better us than someone else, replied Amy. I have been looking forward to killing you, Ash Becca, ever since we met. Ever since we mind controlled you back on Prime 67 days ago, said Darth Uptay. I've been looking forward to the end of the regime completely, said Ash. Amy and Ash clashed with Darth Uptay for several minutes, and soon the end of the duel was sad. Darth Uptay swung his lightsaber faster than the core members did and stabbed the lightsaber into Amy's chest. Ash quickly avenged Amy and sliced off Darth Uptay's green spikes off of his back while trying to chop Darth Uptay's head off. Darth Uptay ran away from the fight with Ash and hid from the rest of the battle while suffering from great pain of loss of a, of a part of his body. Ash watched Amy, Douglas's beautiful wife, cry and eventually die. After watching Amy Armstrong pass away, Ash looked around to see Ben 10 transform into Heat Blast using the Omnitrix. Ben 10 grouped together with Jack Frost, Count Dracula, Nathan Lasky, Jeremy Prime, and the Holy Trinity, leading the Corps Army to finish destroying the regime artillery batteries and tanks. Then, Ash looked far off in the distance from the main battle area to see Team Bravo and Team Doom battling it out with hand-to-hand -hand combat. Ironhide and Ratchet engaged Megatron to prevent the two good Transformers from injuring Shockwave. After punching each other in the face and gut, Megatron ended Ironhide and Ratchet's lives when Megatron used the machine to blow up their heads. After witnessing the loss of their friends, Bulkhead and Arcee worked together to kill the rest of Team Doom. Arcee fired her cannons at Knockout and they impacted the heart of the evil Transformer, killing him and the rest of Ted Stahl. Bulkhead punched with intense force and eventually ripped Soundwave's mechanical heart out from his chest. Optimus Prime, while running towards Sockwave's position, used his cannons and shot down Dreadwing before he could deploy bombs to kill Bulkhead and RC. Optimus blasted Megatron and Starscream out of his way and punched Shockwave in the gut with his fist, yet it did not kill Shockwave. You can't injure me, laughed Shockwave. Perhaps, but at least I can kill you, said Optimus. Optimus, using both of his hands, grabbed a hold of Shockwave's one red eye and ripped it out of its socket. Blinding me won't help you at all, said Shockwave, trying to punch Optimus, yet missing every time. True, but now you die, yelled Optimus. Optimus ripped open Shockwave's chest piece and blasted his cannon into the heart. Shockwave's body collapsed to the ground, and Optimus Prime looked at Megatron and Starscream to realize they were the last of Team Doom. You're next, said Bulkhead, with R.C. beside him. You're not going to kill your own mother and father, are you? asked Starscream. No, I'm not, said Bulkhead. Good, said Starscream. They died when Earth was annihilated. I'm not going to kill them, but you instead, said Bulkhead. Starscream fired his missiles, and Megatron fired the machine at Bulkhead, yet they missed every time. Soon, Bulkhead was in range to do hand-to-hand -hand combat, but instead of firing his cannons directly into the remaining evil Transformers' faces, killing them both. Wait. Soon, Bulkhead was in range to do hand-to-hand -hand combat, but instead of firing his cannons directly into the remaining evil Transformers' faces, Okay, I've read, I'm reading the sentence wrong. Soon Bulkhead was in range to do hand-to-hand -hand combat, but instead of firing his cannons directly into... But instead, fired his cannons directly into the evil Transformers' faces, killing them both. There we go. Bulkhead fired his cannons at the machine, destroyed it, and looked to see only RC, Optimus Prime, and himself as the remaining race of Transformers. Core tanks, regime machine... Oh, I'm sorry... 
Corps tanks, regime machine gun jeeps, fighters, and ships from both armies were engaging each other on the battlefield, while Douglas ran in pursuit of Halo, which was attempting to flee the planet before death by Douglas's hands. Douglas! yelled Ash, watching him run after Halo. Douglas looked at Ash to see him holding Amy in his arms. Douglas ended in his pursuit of Halo, ran over to Ash's position, and was given the dead body of Amy. There was nothing I could do for her, Douglas. Darth Update stabbed her, and I couldn't stop the bleeding, said Ash. I don't blame you, Ash. This is just another reason why the regime must die, said Douglas. Douglas closed his eyes and kissed Amy in the lips. Suddenly, Amy gasped for air and realized she was alive. What did you do? asked Ash, seeing Amy alive. I gave up my immortality and transferred the power to revive her, replied Douglas. While Douglas and Amy... I'm sorry. Well, Douglas and Ash, Ash helped Amy up. They looked around to see General Jeremy Prime, Jack Frost, Count Dracula, and Ben 10 as Heat Blast surrounding Halo Shadow. Going somewhere? asked Ben before burning a circle of fire around the regime leader. Yes, I am taking you all to your death, answered Halo. Halo used his powers to lower the walls of fire and aimed his lightsaber's blade directly towards Ben. However, Jeremy entered the line of fire and took the hit. Jack, Dracula, and Ben watched as Jeremy fell to the ground after sacrificing himself to save a dear friend. Ben looked at Halo and fired fireballs from his hands, but were ineffective when Halo teleported behind Ben. Halo deactivated Ben, being heat blast, when the regime leader stabbed him in the back and swung his lightsaber to chop Ben's head off, but was prevented when a green lightsaber appeared. You're not going to kill him too, said Douglas, holding the lightsaber that saved Ben. Ben quickly activated the Omnitrex again and transformed into forearms, while Jack and Dracula stood alongside the one of rare and pure blood to defeat Halo Shadow. Moments later, Amy and Ash joined the group and looked at Halo to see him scared out of his mind from being outnumbered. Give up, Halo, and surrender, said Douglas. Never, yelled Halo. Halo charged towards the group leaders and used his powers to push Amy, Ash, Douglas, and Jack out of the way and slam them onto the rocky ground. Dracula stood ready to face the regime leader by himself, but was no match for Halo's speed and was soon decapitated. No! yelled Ben, watching as his brother was killed by the evil man. Ben, as forearms, stood up, dodged Halo's lightsaber swing, grabbed a hold of Halo's hands, and began punching Halo in the gut with his other two. Halo was losing the ability to breathe, so he teleported behind Ben and defeated forearms with his lightsaber. This time no one's going to save you, said Halo, preparing to kill Ben in human form. Suddenly, a wooden stick covered in ice blocked the passage for Halo's lightsaber to chop Ben's head off. Everyone looked to see Jack with his staff acting like a lightsaber. You really have pissed me off by killing my brother, Count Dracula. You and I have a score to settle, said Jack Frost. Too bad. I have no interest in fighting you. The only person I want dead is the ultimate threat to my regime, said Halo. Halo used his powers to push Jack away from him and looked at Douglas. Are you ready to end this once and for all, asked Douglas. Are you immortal, asked Halo. Yes, because you killed my wife, replied Douglas. Darn, I really wanted that woman dead so you and I could feel the pain I felt. When God and the rest of the Corps put me on Prime 67, said Halo, showing his evil mind. You deserved it, said Douglas. No, I didn't, yelled Halo, running head on towards the Corps leader. Douglas and Halo began dueling each other with their lightsabers, while the Corps army of Primes, Angels, and Humans defeated the regime of T-180s and Demons. Your regime is dead, said Douglas. Perhaps, but so is your Corps, replied Halo. Douglas looked at the Holy Trinity and Nathan Lasky far off in the distance, checking the dead bodies of regime troops, and suddenly explosions began going off. Douglas and the rest of the Corps leaders looked around to see the Holy Trinity and Nathan Lasky's body on the ground and dead. Douglas, Amy, Ash, Jack, Ben, Optimus, Bumblebee, RC, Bulkhead, Halo, and Update, which was still hiding, watched as other explosions began going off and killing the Corps forces. My forces have auto bombs that detonate a few seconds after being killed, said Halo. The group of nine leaders and two regime leaders watched as all the primes, angels, and humans were blown up.
Soon the armies of the régime and the corps were no more. "Let's end this right now," said Douglas, really pissed off at Hallowell. Amy Ashe, Jack Benn, Optimus, Bumblebee, Arcee, and Bulkhead watched as the one of rare and true blood fought the other of hatred and angry blood. After three minutes of unending swinging, flipping, teleporting, firing balls of fire, and spinning, Douglas remembered one of his greatest powers he was told of time travel. Douglas, while the duelist lightsabers were in an X formation, closed his eyes and began to slowly take control of the power. Halo broke off of the connection and swung his lightsaber to kill Douglas, who was just standing there, but suddenly froze. Douglas opened his eyes and looked to see Halo frozen with the end of his lightsaber's blade inches from, from Douglas's throat. Douglas looked around to see that everyone else was frozen and realized an awesome truth. He didn't time travel, but he instead froze time. Douglas, with this realization, placed his green lightsaber across Halo's throat, closed his eyes, took control of his mind again, and unfroze time. Everyone unfroze, and Douglas opened his eyes quickly to ask Halo a question, while everyone wondered how Halo was in a position of near death. Halo Shadow, I make you this final offer. Surrender to me now, and pay for your crimes justly, or die at this very moment in history, said Douglas. The final chapter, guys. Chapter 21, Survivors. I surrender to you, Douglas Armstrong, replied Halo. Darth Update, which was still hiding in a cave far off from the battle area, saw Halo surrender when the regime leader deactivated his green lightsaber, I'm sorry, his red lightsaber, and gave it to the core leader. Frustrated that Halo would give up so easily to the core, Darth Update left his hiding place, grabbed a nearby sniper rifle, aimed, and fired at his commander. Fired at his commander. The sound of the bullet could be heard, but only Ash was able to determine where it was coming from and realized it was headed to Halo. No! yelled Douglas. The core leaders looked to see Ash Becca with a bullet hole in his head. Over there! yelled Optimus, seeing Darth Upte with the sniper rifle. Darth Upte began to flee for his life while climbing the rocky terrain around him, but was stopped with a red light but was stopped when a red lightsaber entered the green stick's backside. The core group looked to see Halo had taken his lightsaber from Douglas and killed his last general. With a stunned look all on their faces, Halo informed Douglas, Amy, Jack, Ben, Optimus, Bumblebee, RC, and Bulkhead that he never liked Darth Update at all. I have not been in my right mind these past several years, and I feel it is my duel, duty to pay for my crimes here and now, said Halo, giving back his lightsaber to Douglas. How? asked Amy. If you, Douglas, kill me, you can wish for two people to come back to life, said Halo. Why should I trust you and not allow you to unleash something more evil upon us? asked Douglas. You can't trust me. However, would you want to miss this chance to have a reward for ending the final war and ending evil once and for all? replied Halo. Suddenly, blue ghostly souls appeared and soon would be made out to be God. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Nathan Lasky, Brittany Lewis, and Ash Becca. Though we are dead and in heaven, we came to advise you on whom to pick, said God. Who do you think I should pick? asked Douglas. We all agreed on picking whoever you think would help recover the universe from the aftermath of this war, answered Jesus. Then I have already decided, said Douglas, looking at Halo, prepared to die. Make it quick before I change my mind, said Halo. Douglas swung his green lightsaber and chopped the head off of Halo Shadow, ending evil forever. Suddenly the body of Halo vanished into dust, and moments later, Devin Armstrong and Brittany Lewis appeared as real humans. Then, the robot body of Bulkhead crashed to the ground because Devin's mind was no longer inside of it. It would seem that Halo had a small part of good in him while trying to kill it, said R.C. So, now that this war is over, what are we to do now? asked Devon in human form. Douglas, I prepare a place for you, your friends, and your family in the uncharted space, 
far east of New Heaven, New Earth, and Delta Omega. It is a planet called Earth-4, where the remainder of the core can live in peace without evil, said God in a ghostly form. Thanks, but how are we going to get there with no spaceships, asked Douglas. Suddenly, a spaceship appeared, and the doors opened. You are the survivors of not only the final war, but also the battle of the universe here on Lambdo. Take this ship called the... Whoa. Take this ship called the Cristo and go live in peace. Coordinates are already set for the ship so you don't have to worry about how to reach Earth 4, said God. So the conflict between good and evil is at last over? There's no more evil to fight, asked Douglas? One of rare and pure blood. It is done, replied God, but in a tone that registered to Douglas that something evil remained. Before you leave, I have one final question, said Douglas. What might that be? asked Nathan. Ask Becca, are you my dead brother, Daryl? asked Douglas. The core members looked at Ash and wondered what the answer would be to the odd question. Yes. However, after I died within weeks of being born and came back to life in heaven, I became Ash Becca to hide my true identity from evil, replied Ash. What threat would evil present to you? asked Douglas. I was a fraud to protect you. With my name being changed, evil would never get the idea to use me as a family member token if I was captured and make you and the rest of the Corps do something crazy to save me, said Ash. Well, that didn't work at all, commented Jack, butting in on the conversation. Thanks, said Douglas. Seconds later, the ghosts of the Holy Trinity, Ash Becca, and Nathan Lathke disappeared, and the Human Corps members began loading Christo. Are you guys coming, asked Douglas, to Optimus, to Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, and RC? Negative. This is our home, and we will rebuild it to its former glory, said Optimus. Then this is goodbye, said Douglas, entering the ship and watching the doors close. Crystal blasted off of the planet Lambdo, with Douglas, Amy, Devin, Brittany, Jack, and Ben heading towards the planet planet heading towards the planet Earth 4. While heading to the new human homeworld, the core group of six people entered the command bridge and realized it was alike to the SDC 40's command bridge. Before everyone sat down in their positions, Douglas kissed Amy while Devin kissed Brittany in celebration of evil's destruction. After entering the uncharted space, weapons like missiles, lightsabers, blaster rifles, Ben's Omnitrix, and Jack's staff vanished. I guess the universe needs no more weapons since there is no more war between good and evil, said Amy. Jack, Ben, and even Douglas felt a hole inside of themselves because of their loss of power and became ill on the command bridge. As hours passed on and a new day dawned, the group awoke from their positions on the command bridge to see a planet full of land and water. What was strange was it looked completely identical to the destroyed planet of Earth. Of Earth. Moments later, Christo landed on the ground. Everyone left the ship and was amazed at what they saw. Earth 4 was a tropical paradise planet similar to comfort torting with planets, trees, and creatures from comfort, from comfort torting, but with an appearance in space of Earth. Welcome to paradise, said a beautiful voice. The crew, I'm sorry, the core group looked to see three dazzling sights. All of them were wearing short clothing, but had different features. Hello, my name is Douglas Armstrong and the high commander of the core, said Douglas. Hello. My name is Stacy Blonde, said the woman with blonde hair and blue eyes, which was looking at Ben romantically. Hello, my name is Susanna Roberts, said the woman with red hair and black eyes, which was looking at Jack ro romantically. Hello, my name is Jennifer Clinton, said the woman with black hair and red eyes. After the introduction of all the women, Jennifer quickly blasted a bright light in front of everyone. The light dimmed, and the core group of eight looked to see Jennifer transform into Halo Shadow. How is this possible? asked Douglas. Did you really think chopping my head off would kill me? There's only one way to kill me, replied Halo. How did my brother and his love come back to life then? asked Douglas. That was easy to do once I was dead. I just used my powers while I was in hell for a few minutes to make you truly believe I was dead. 
Then I tricked God into thinking I was a woman that didn't belong in hell and was teleported here with these two women to live. Seems like I've been busier than you, said Halo. Then this war isn't over, said Jack. Correct, Jack Frost, but this fight is between your commander and me only, said Halo. Halo tossed Douglas a metal sword, and the leaders of good and evil began dueling it out again with metal swords. While they fought, Douglas's powers, Ben's Omnitrix, and Jack's staff reappeared. Halo, I like your spirit of wanting to complete the task at hand, but this is one you'll not succeed at. Surrender willingly and die nobly, or have it the hard way, said Douglas. I refuse to surrender to one of rare and pure blood, said Halo. Suddenly, Halo swung his sword so fast that he slid under Douglas' sword out... Nope, that didn't come out right. Suddenly, Halo swung his sword so fast that he slid Douglas' sword out of his hands and onto the ground. Any last words? asked Halo. Yes, go to hell, yelled an odd voice. Douglas and Halo looked to see Ben had transformed into Brainstorm, an orange-colored green... I'm sorry, an orange... Orange-colored crab that fires electricity from its open brain. Suddenly, Ben fired a bolt of lightning at Halo and made the regime leader smash into a tree. Ben transformed out of Brainstorm into Big Chill and watched Halo stand up. Had enough? asked Ben. Never, replied Halo. Ben, as Big Chill, fired a ray of cold and freezing breath at Halo to freeze him solid, but wasn't able to freeze him since Halo kept melting the ice with his fireballs. Eventually, Halo broke out of the trap and charged towards Ben, but before he could get to Ben, Jack fired a ray of freezing ice from his staff at Halo. Ben looked at his brother and realized that together they could freeze Halo. Jack Frost and Big Chill fired their freezing rays at Halo and turned the evil person into a solid statue. It ends today, Douglas, stabbing Halo in the heart with his sword. Douglas used his powers and teleported the statue into the black hole, located in the middle of the planet zone. Douglas turned to see Amy, Devon, Brittany, Jack, and Ben in human form, Stacy and Susanna, to understand that together they would be rebuilding a universe lost centuries to war. As the day of celebrating evil's defeat continued, Jack Frost married Susanna Roberts, and Ben Ted married Stacy Blonde, with Douglas acting as the pastor. As the, <clears throat> as the day came to a close, the last of the corps entered a house where Stacy and Susanna were living in, and everyone went to sleep. During the night, Douglas began to have a terrible nightmare, but was ended when he came into a meeting with God in a dream. Douglas, I have a message that must be told in your sleep, said God. What is the emergency, besides the fact that Halo Shadow wasn't truly dead, asked Douglas in a rude tone. I just wanted to inform you that evil is no longer a threat, and to live in peace while repopulating, while repopulating the universe with goodness, said God. Thank you, my lord. I guess I proved you right that I am the one that possesses rare blood, since I believe in your teachings, said, said Douglas. True, but so does the rest of your family. May you and your family live long, said God, keeping a secret from Douglas. In the following years, the Corps gained new members when Lucas Armstrong, Will Frost, and Gwen Ten were born. Construction took place with the family of Good working together, and soon the first city for humans to live in was built and was called Ike. Ben kept his Omnitrix on his left hand until his death. Jack used his staff eventually as an old man's walking stick before he too passed away. Douglas never used his powers because he wanted to live his life with his wife Amy and his son Lucas like normal humans. Together, the core members repopulated Earth 4 and eventually the entire universe with goodness. Sixteen years later. My father was a great man. He always liked to say his famous quote, To us few, Earth is just a memory. I wondered for years on end what he meant by that. I thought he was talking about the planet we were living on at the time, but soon learned the planet we were on was called Earth-4. Soon I realized my father, my mother, their friends, and their family mostly came from the planet Earth, which was blown up by evil. My name is Lucas Armstrong, 
and it is an honor to help my dead father conclude the book he gave to me before entering heaven. Optimus Prime and my father led others to fight a great war together in the past. Although our allies are dead, we few that remain will face the future together. Because of our past, we will be able to make a better future for generations to come. We lost many good people in this war, but gained new ones. With the war over, we have a place we can finally call home. If searching for a new home because of the aftermath of the war, come to Earth 4. We are here. We are waiting. In the final war, there were claim in the final war, there were calms in the storm. Days when our allies turned against us and revealed their true nature. But the day will never come when we forsake this universe and its people. Lucas Armstrong, December 25th, 2013. Have you finished Lucas as God in Lucas's home on Earth 4? Yes, replied Lucas. I need you to tell me something, said God. Okay, said Lucas. We have visitors coming from a parallel universe your father created. In a few hours, Stacy, Henry, Jenny, and other humans will arrive on a ship called the Skillet, said God. What's the problem? asked Lucas. Things will become confusing soon. You will be asked to explore the universes. Do so, said God. Why? asked Lucas. Because you'll learn the truth about all seven universes and your father, said God. Moments later, a ship landed on Earth 4 with Skillet on the side. And that last part kind of ties in with what's going to happen in the ending of Stacy the Halo War. Guys, we have done it. We have finished the entire Unifor Universe series. It has taken me over five months to record all these book videos for you guys. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed how I ended it, let me know in the comment section. If you guys hated how I ended it, please let me know in the comment section. It's over, guys. That's how I... That's it. All of evil is destroyed. There's no more weapons. Everyone lives in harmony on Earth 4. Somewhere out there in uncharted space. We did it, guys. We, we've... We finished. I can't. Oh, the, that was amazing. I'll be completely honest. That was the best 46, 47 minutes. I have read a book in a long time. Guys, this is a masterpiece in my opinion. Oh. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the introduction and overview of Stacy the Halo War, the final book in my book series. And my plan is I will be dividing that up into three parts. You guys all have an amazing day. And I'll see you guys in the next video or stream, whether it be here on YouTube or Twitch at Douglas447. You guys have a good one. Bye. Oh, can't believe it's over. But it is.